Chen Kuo, courtesy name Kun Zhong and pseudonym Meng Chi Wang, was a Han Chinese polymathic scientist and statesman of the Song dynasty, excelling in many fields of study and statecraft. He was a mathematician, astronomer, meteorologist, geologist, zoologist, botanist, pharmacologist, agronomist, archaeologist, ethnographer, cartographer, encyclopedist, general diplomat, hydraulic engineer, inventor, academy chancellor, finance minister, governmental state inspector, poet, and musician. He was the head official for the Bureau of Astronomy in the Song Court, as well as an assistant minister of imperial hospitality. At court his political allegiance was to the reformist faction known as the New Policies Group, headed by Chancellor Wang Anqi. In his Dreamful Essays A Dream Torrent Essays of 1088, Shen was the first to describe the magnetic needle compass, which would be used for navigation. Shen discovered the concept of true north in terms of magnetic declination towards the North Pole, with experimentation of suspended magnetic needles and the improved meridian determined by Shen's measurement of the distance between the pole, star and true north. This was the decisive step in human history to make compasses more useful for navigation, and may have been a concept unknown in Europe for another 400 years. Alongside his colleague Weipu, Shen planned to map the orbital paths of the moon and the planets in an intensive five-year project involving daily observations, yet this was thwarted by political opponents at court. To aid his work in astronomy, Shen Kuo made improved designs of the armillary sphere Nomon sighting tube, and invented a new type of inflow water clock. Shen Kuo devised a geological hypothesis for land formation, based upon findings of inland marine fossils, knowledge of soil erosion, and a deposition of silt. He also proposed a hypothesis of gradual climate change. After observing ancient petrified bamboos that were preserved underground in a dry northern habitat that could not support bamboo growth in his time, he was the first literary figure in China to mention the use of the dry dock to repair boats suspended out of water, and also wrote of the effectiveness of the relatively new invention of the canal pound lock. Although Ibn al-Haytham was the first to describe camera obscura, Shen was the first in China to do so. Several decades later, Shen wrote extensively about movable type printing invented by Bai Sheng, and because of his written works the legacy of Bai Sheng and the modern understanding of the earliest movable type has been handed down to later generations. Following an old tradition in China, Shen created a raised relief map while inspecting borderlands. His description of an ancient crossbow mechanism which he himself unearthed proved to be a Jacob's Star, a surveying tool which wasn't known in Europe until described by Levi Ben Gerson in 1321. Shen Kuo wrote several other books besides the Dream Pool essays, yet much of the writing in his other books has not survived. Some of Shen's poetry was preserved in posthumous written works, although much of his focus was on technical and scientific issues. He had an interest in divination and the supernatural, the latter including his vivid description of unidentified flying objects from eyewitness testimony. He also wrote commentary on ancient Duerst and Confucian texts. Life Birth and Youth Shen Kuo was born in Qiantang in the year 1031. His father Shen Zhou was a somewhat lower-class gentry figure serving in official posts on the provincial level. His mother was from a family of equal status in Suzhou, with her maiden name being Zhu. Shen Kuo received his initial childhood education from his mother, which was a common practice in China during this period. She was very educated herself, teaching Kuo and his brother Pai the military doctrines of her own elder brother Zhu Tang. Since Shen was unable to boast of a prominent familial clan history like many Many of his elite peers born in the north, he was forced to rely on his wit and stern determination to achieve
achieve in his studies, subsequently passing the imperial exams and enter the challenging and sophisticated life of an exam-drafted state bureaucrat. From about 1040, Shen's family moved around Sichuan province and finally to the international seaport at Xiamen, where Shen's father accepted minor provincial posts in each new location. Shen Zhou also served several years in the prestigious capital judiciary, the equivalent of a federal supreme court. Shen Kuo took notice of the various towns and rural features of China as his family traveled, while he became interested during his youth in the diverse topography of the land. He also observed the intriguing aspects of his father's engagement in administrative governance and the managerial problems involved. These experiences had a deep impact on him as he later became a government official. Since he often became ill as a child, Shen Kuo also developed a natural curiosity about medicine and pharmaceutics. Shen Zhou died in the late winter of 1051, when his son Shen Kuo was 21 years old. Shen Kuo grieved for his father, and following Confucian ethics, remained inactive in a state of mourning for three years until 1054. As of 1054, Shen began serving in minor local governmental posts. However, his natural abilities to plan, organize, and design were proven early in life. One example is his design and supervision of the hydraulic drainage of an embankment system, which converted some 100,000 acres of swampland into prime farmland. Shen Kuo noted that the success of the silt fertilization method relied upon the effective operation of sluice gates of irrigation canals. Official career In 1063 Shen Kuo successfully passed the imperial examinations, the difficult national level standard test that every high official was required to pass in order to enter the governmental system. He not only passed the exam however, but was placed in to the higher category of the best and brightest students. While serving at Zhang Zhao, Shen's brilliance and dutiful character caught the attention of Shang Chu, the fiscal intendant of the region. Shen made a lasting impression upon Zhang, who recommended Shen for a court appointment in the financial administration of the central court. Shen would also eventually marry Zhang's daughter, who became his second wife. In his career as a scholar official, for the central government, Shen Kuo was also an ambassador to the Western Xia dynasty in Liao dynasty, a military commander, a director of hydraulic works, and the leading chancellor of the Hanlin Academy. By 1072, Shen was appointed as the head official of the Bureau of Astronomy. With his leadership position in the Bureau, Shen was responsible for projects in improving calendrical science, and proposed many reforms to the Chinese calendar alongside the work of his colleague Wei Pu. With his impressive skills and aptitude for matters of economy and finance, Shen was appointed as the finance commissioner at the central court. As written by Li Zhiyi, a man married to Hu Wenru's Shen Kuo was Li's mentor while Shen served as an official. According to Li's epitaph for his wife, Shen would sometimes relay questions via Li to Hu when he needed clarification for his mathematical work, as Hu Wenru was esteemed by Shen as a remarkable female mathematician. Shen lamented, if only she were a man, Wenru would be my friend. While employed by the central government, Shen Kuo was also sent out with others to inspect the granary system of the empire, investigating problems of illegal collections, negligence, ineffective disaster relief, and inadequate wart conservancy projects. While Shen was appointed as the regional inspector of Shenjiang in 1073, the emperor requested that Shen pay a visit to the famous poet Su Shi, then an administrator. 
administrator in Hangzhou. Shen took advantage of this meeting to copy some of Su's poetry, which he presented to the emperor indicating that it expressed abusive and hateful speech against the Song court. These poems were later politicized by Li Ding and Xu Dan in order to level a court case against Su. With his demonstrations of loyalty and ability, Shen Kuo was awarded the honorary title of a state foundation Viscount by Emperor Shenzong of Song, who placed a great amount of trust in Shen Kuo. He was even made companion to the heir apparent. At court Shen was a political favorite of the Chancellor Wang Anxi, who was the leader of the political faction of reformers, also known as the New Policies Group. Shen Kuo had a previous history with Wang Anxi, since it was Wang who had composed the funerary epitaph for Shen's father, Zhou. Shen Kuo soon impressed Wang Anxi with his skills and abilities as an administrator and government agent. In 1072, Shen was sent to supervise Wang's program of surveying the building of silt deposits in the Bayan Canal outside the capital city. Using an original technique, Shen successfully dredged the canal and demonstrated the formidable value of the silt gathered as a fertilizer. He gained further reputation at court once he was dispatched as an envoy to the Khitan Liao dynasty in the summer of 1075. The kittens had made several aggressive negotiations of pushing the border south, while manipulating several incompetent Chinese ambassadors who conceded to the Liao Kingdom's demands. In a brilliant display of diplomacy, Shen Kuo came to the camp of the Katan monarch at Mount Yongan armed with copies of previously archived diplomatic negotiations between the Song and Liao dynasties. Shen Kuo refuted Emperor Daozong's bluffs point for point, while the Song re-established the rightful borderline. In regard to the Lai dynasty of Tai Viet, Shen demonstrated in his dreamful essays that he was familiar with the key players in the prelude to the Sino-Vietnamese War of 1075-1077. With his reputable achievements, Shen became a trusted member of Wang Anxi's elite circle of 18 unofficial core political loyalists to the New Policies Group. Although much of Wang Anxi's reforms outlined in the New Policies centered on state finance, land tax reform, and the imperial examinations, there were also military concerns. This included policies of raising militias to lessen the the expense of upholding a million soldiers, cutting government monopolies on saltpeter and sulfur production and distribution in 1076, and aggressive military policy towards China's northern rivals of the Western Xia and Liao dynasties. A few years after Song dynasty military forces had made victorious territorial gains against the Tanguts of the Western Xia, in 1080 Shen Kuo was entrusted as a military officer in defense of Yanzhou. During the autumn months of 1081, Shen was successful in defending Song dynasty territory while capturing several fortified towns of the western Xia. The emperor Shenzong of Song rewarded Shen with numerous titles for his merit in these battles, and in the 16 months of Shen's military campaign, he received 273 letters from the emperor. However, Emperor Shenzong trusted an arrogant military officer who disobeyed the emperor and Shen's proposal for strategic fortifications, instead fortifying what Shen considered useless strategic locations. Furthermore, this officer expelled Shen from his commanding post at the main citadel, so as to deny him any glory and chance of victory. The result of this was nearly catastrophic, as the forces of the arrogant officer were decimated. Xin Zhongyao states that the death toll was 60,000. Nonetheless, Shen was successful in defending his fortifications and the only possible Tangut invasion route to Yanzhou.
impeachment and later life. The new Chancellor Kaike held Shen responsible for the disaster and loss of life, along with abandoning the territory which Shen Kuo had fought for. Kai ousted Shen from his seat of office. Shen's life was now forever changed as he lost his once reputable career in state governance and the military. Shen was then put under probation in a fixed residence for the next six years. However, as he was isolated from governance, he decided to pick up the ink brush and dedicate himself to intensive scholarly studies. After completing two geographical atlases for a state-sponsored program, Shen was rewarded by having his sentence of probation lifted, allowing him to live in a place of his choice. Shen was also pardoned by the court for any previous faults or crimes that were claimed against him. In his more idle years removed from court affairs, Shen Kuo enjoyed pastimes of the Chinese gentry and literati that would indicate his intellectual level and cultural taste to others. As described in his dream pool essays, Shen Kuo enjoyed the company of the nine guests, a figure of speech for the Chinese zither, the older 17 by 17 line variant of Vai Chi, Zen Buddhist meditation, ink tea drinking, alchemy, chanting poetry, conversation, and drinking wine. These nine activities were an extension to the oldest called for arts of the Chinese scholar. According to Zhou Yu's book Ping Zhou Table Talks of 1119, Shen Kuo had two marriages. The second wife was the daughter of Shang Chu, who came from Wanan. Lady Shang was said to be overbearing and fierce, often abusive to Shen Kuo, even attempting at one time to pull off his beard. Shen Kuo's children were often upset over this and prostrated themselves to Lady Zhang to quit this behavior. Despite this, Lady Zhang went as far as to drive out Shen Kuo's son from his first marriage, expelling him from the household. However, after Lady Zhang died, Shen Kuo fell into a deep depression and even attempted to jump into the Yangtze River to drown himself. Although this suicide attempt failed, he would die a year later. In the 1070s, Shen had purchased a lavish garden estate on the outskirts of modern-day Shenzhang, Jiangsu province, a place of great beauty which he named Dream Brook after he visited it for the first time in 1086. Shen Kuo permanently moved to the Dream Brook estate in 1088, and in that same year he completed his life's written work of the Dream Pool essays, naming the book after his garden estate property. It was that the Shen Kuo spent the last several years of his life in leisure isolation and illness, until his death in 1095.